My name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control software tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. In this continuous recording part one, Native Mode Tutorial, we will cover how to use the continuous recording feature in its native or default operational mode. Continuous recording can be used in a variety of ways to automatically record a CINE into the camera's memory, then immediately edit and save that CINE to a user-specified location of an attached hard drive without any user intervention by providing a soft or hard trigger to the camera. Once the save process completes, the camera will automatically be placed back into the recording mode to repeat the process until the continuous recording feature is disabled by the end user. In subsequent continuous recording tutorials, we will cover other ways continuous recording can be used. Before we start using the continuous recording feature, let's quickly review where we're at. For these tutorials, I'll be using the Mero Lab 310 Cam 3 camera with a resolution of 768 by 480 and a sample rate of 7400 frames per second and its exposure time set based on the lighting conditions here. No other features such as multi-cine, image-based auto trigger, etc. will be used for this part of the continuous recording tutorial. For now, I'm going to set the camera so that it records an equal amount of pre and post trigger frames into its image memory. Now that you know how the capture parameters are defined, let's talk about what I need to do to use the continuous recording feature. With the camera already selected and the live tab open, I'll open the continuous recording selector and scroll down so we can see all the continuous recording options. Prior to activating the continuous recording feature, I need to tell the PCC software where the files are going to be written to, how they will be named, the format they will be saved as, and which images of the recorded city will be saved. To do this, I need to click the Browse button to open a Save Cine dialog window. Just as I did in the Saving Your First Cine tutorial, I'll navigate to the folder the files are to be saved in. I'm going to save the files to the C colon Program Files Phantom Cine's Tutorial Cine's folder. I need to assign a file name that could be used to name multiple files. So I need to use the Phantom File Naming Convention to do this. You can find out more about the Phantom File Naming Convention in the PCC Supplied Help file. I'm going to type into the file name field CRNative at 4. CRNative will be the root file name. So every file that we create during the session of continuous recording will start with the name CRNative. The at sign is a special character that tells the software that we will be creating more than one CINE file and it needs to append the number of digits that follows. In this case, four digits, starting at 0000 through 9999. The software allows us to append from one to eight digits. Now that I've entered the file name, I now need to specify the file format. For this tutorial, I'm going to select the Cine RAW format. The last thing we need to do in the Save Cine dialog window is specify the image range to save. As you can see, the software, by default, is set to save the full Cine. However, for these takes, I don't need to save the full Cine. I only need to save a portion of it. Therefore, I'm going to select the User Defined option from the Range Option Selection list and enter the image number of the first image I want to save in the first image data entry field. In this case, image number negative 200. And the number of the last image to be saved in the last image data entry field. In this case, 200. So how did I come up with the image range? Well, prior to starting this process, I performed a quick test of my subject matter. And when I edited the test setting, the software displayed the first and last image numbers of the edited CINE. So I just added some extra images on both sides to use as buffer space to compensate for any inconsistencies in the test subject. I'm also going to set the desired save options. 
For details on the various save options, review the applying border data and other save options tutorials. Now that I have entered all the required information in the Save dialog window, I can click the Save button. Notice the software displays the path and file name to the left of the Browse button, along with the range of images that will be saved to each of the CINE files. We will cover the Auto Trigger, Firmware Order Recording, and Minimal GUI Refresh options. In the Continuous Recording Part 2, combined with multi-cine, auto trigger, firmware order recording, and image range tutorial, and the calibration snapshot option in the continuous recording part 4 create calibration snapshots tutorial. Now I can enable the continuous recording feature by placing a check mark in the active enable box. Notice as soon as I do that the camera starts recording the first city's pre-trigger frames. The capture button is disabled and awaits a trigger signal. For details on the various ways to trigger a camera, see the Capturing Your First Cine tutorial. I'm simply going to provide a soft trigger by clicking on the trigger button. Notice the camera records its post trigger frames and once the post trigger buffer is full, the software saves the image range we specified to the specified location as you will see shortly. Once the save process has completed, the camera is automatically placed back into the capture mode, starts filling the pre-trigger buffer, and waits for the next trigger signal to repeat the process. If the camera detects a trigger signal while it is in the process of filling its post-trigger buffer or saving the cine to the specified location, the trigger signal will be ignored. We will talk about how to get around this in the continuous recording combined with multi-cine, auto trigger, firmware auto recording, and image range tutorial. Notice the software also indicates the number of cines that have been saved during this continuous recording session as a save count. The error count is the number of cines that could not be saved using the continuous recording feature. So, let's trigger the camera a second time. And just like before, the camera finishes filling its buffer with post-trigger frames, then edits and saves the cine out to a hard drive based on the parameters we defined earlier. And just like before, once the camera has finished saving the cine to the specified hard drive, the camera is put into the capture mode and the whole process repeats itself. Now I'm going to disable continuous recording by unchecking the active enable box. Then click the Yes button in the Continuous Recording Confirmation window. Notice the camera is no longer in the recording mode. The Capture button is reactivated and the Trigger button is now inactive. With two CINE files captured, edited, and saved using the Continuous Recording feature, let's click on the Open Files Toolbar button and navigate to the folder the continuous recording files were saved into the C colon program files phantom cines tutorial cines folder. As you can see here are the two files I just created. So I'll highlight one of the files and click the open button. The PCC software now displays that cine in a playback panel and jumps to the play control panel. As you can see the system has saved a total of 400 frames, starting at frame negative 200 up through image 200, just as I instructed the system to do. I can now review the CINE using the video control buttons, re-edit the CINE if I needed to, and or save the CINE we re-edited it. So that concludes the continuous recording native mode tutorial, where you learned how to use this feature in its native form.